It's no mystery to people that the busy streets of Washington, D.C. are a beautiful place to be. But are they a safe place? Most people probably would agree that they are safe. But what exactly is safety? Well, whenever you walk next to someone on the streets and you don't feel like you're in harm, that's actually a product of the judicial branch. The judicial branch is the branch of government which keeps all its citizens under the safety of the law. The judicial branch does this by checks and balances. The judicial branch can interpret whether the laws passed by the legislative branch and approved by the executive branch are constitutional or not. The judicial branch is also associated with the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is the highest court in all the lands of the United States of America and is also where the most major cases in the United States are held. The Supreme Court is also where the judicial proceedings are taking place. Judicial proceedings are where the Supreme Court reviews the law and determines if it's constitutional or not. With such an important court system as the Supreme Court, who's the important person that's behind the Supreme Court? Well, he's known as the Chief Justice of the United States, and in layman's terms, well, as stated, he is basically the leader of the Supreme Court, who has the final say on most decisions. The Supreme Court, however, is not the only court that's available in the United States. In fact, there are the state courts and the federal courts. The federal courts deal with disputes about laws that apply to the entire country rather than just one state, while state courts deal with disputes about state laws, and each state has its own court systems that go by its own rules but follow the general idea that court systems have. Now, this isn't to say that state courts have laws that are above federal and United States laws by any means. In fact, it can be quite the opposite. When state courts have to deal with situations that are a bit complex and convoluted, the federal courts will usually take over and deal with it in their own methods. This can occur whenever the situation might be someone from a different state being attempted to be tried in a different state than he should be tried in. These courts can also be known as trial courts. Trial courts are courts in which trials take place and are authorized to hear any type of case, whether it be a civil or criminal case. The courts above these trial courts are known as the appellate courts, or also known as the appeal courts. These appeal courts are courts to which lower courts, such as the state courts or the federal courts, will appeal to for the purpose of reviewing a case. These courts of appeals nationwide operate by varying rules. The authority of appellate courts to review decisions of lower courts varies widely from one jurisdiction to another, as well as from state to state. In some places, the appellate court has limited powers of review. Generally speaking, an appellate court's judgment provides the final directive of the appeals courts as to the matter appealed. But what exactly are criminal and civil cases? A criminal case is where a person is accused of a crime and tried for it, while civil cases is where a person feels that his or her rights are violated and presses charges against another individual or a state. Oh boy, was that a lot of information? I think it's about time we stop and take a break with this very informative clip. <laughs> Well, with that strange clip out of the way, it's time to talk about one of the most landmark cases in the United States Supreme Court, the Marbury v. Madison case. The Marbury v. Madison case is very important because it's the case which the court formed the basis for the exercise of judicial review in the United States under Article 3 of the Constitution. The landmark decision helped define the boundary between the constitutionally separate executive and judicial branches of the American form of government. This case is a result when a petition came to the Supreme Court from William Marbury, who had been appointed Justice of the Peace in the District of Columbia by President John Adams, but whose commission was not subsequently delivered. This was during a time when John Adams, right before leaving his presidency, gave a lot of his friends positions in the United States government which were a pretty high position, and it was argued to be unconstitutional by those who were against him. 
What Marbury was trying to petition the Supreme Court to do was to force the new Secretary of State, James Madison, to deliver these documents. The court, with John Marshall as the Chief of Justice in the Supreme Court, found firstly that Madison's refusal to deliver the commission was both illegal and remedial. Nonetheless, the court stopped short of compelling Madison to hand over Marbury's commission, instead holding that the provision of the Judiciary Act of 1789 that enabled Marbury to bring his claim to the Supreme Court was itself unconstitutional, since it purported to extend the court's original jurisdiction beyond that which Article 3 established. The petition was therefore denied. There's a lot of information that could be said about the judicial branch, and this video has just scratched the surface of what there really is to it. That doesn't mean that you haven't learned a thing or two by watching this. In fact, you can now say that you know the ins and outs of the judicial branch as you need. You've learned about Supreme Courts and the Chief Justice of the United States, who is basically the leader of those. You now know about federal courts and state courts, appellate courts and trial courts. You've learned what happens at the appeal courts, and you also learned about criminal and civil cases alongside judicial proceedings. There's just so much information regarding the judicial branch, and with this surface being scratched, you know just what's needed to be known, but you don't know it all yet. We hope that you learned all the information that you need to learn from this video. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.